I'd like to call to order the May 9th, 2023 Columbia Borough Council meeting. Got to have a roll call, please. Councilperson Zink. Here. Councilperson Kaufman. Here. Councilperson Stahl. Here. Councilperson Fisher. Councilperson Price. Here. Councilperson Lennon. Here. Councilperson Navarro. Here. Mayor Lutz. Um, I would like to note that mm -hmm. Mayor Lutz and uh, Councilperson Fisher are attending the County Planning Commission awards where uh, Mary Wickenheiser is being honored by the, by, by the lifetime, with the Lifetime Achievement Award. So that's why they are not here. Um, would anybody care to offer an invocation? No. Life is Good evening. I'm the Reverend Martha Harris. I'm honored to serve as priest in charge at St. Paul Episcopal Church in neighboring church. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask you to send down upon these elected officials and rural uh, leaders the spirit of wisdom, charity, forgiveness, and justice. Help these leaders to see beyond their differences, work together with steadfast purpose to promote the well-being of all people here in Columbia. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Council Person Coffin would like to be a I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Announcement of executive and information session. Um, after the last council meeting on April 25th, 2023, council held an executive uh, session to discuss a personnel matter. Are there any additions, deletions, or reorganization of the agenda? Um, I would like to remove item 16, or actually reword it to just adjournment. There will not be an executive session after the meeting tonight. Are there any other um, additions, deletions, or reorganization needed? So I have a motion to um, uh, approve the reorganized agenda. Second. I have a motion by Council Person Kaufman, second by Council Person Stahl to approve the reorganized agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Citizen comment, non-agenda items only. Um, would anyone like to speak? Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Andrew Zalek. Uh -huh. I'm the president and CEO of Lancaster Love and Habitat for Humanity. And okay. I actually just wanted to say all of you, thank you very much for speaking along the approval process to help us get to the point of permitting. And we have a lovely big hole fenced in, don't worry, <laughs> it's fenced hole in the ground to making four affordable homes on South Fifth Street. Uh, we're looking forward to having our volunteers starting in August and hopefully wrapping all the finishing touches and so forth over three months. But thank you. We're excited to be celebrating and thank you. Glad you're here. Yes. And did you want to put a plug in for the women and build? Yes, because I did sign on. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. So yes, uh, we actually were hoping to hold that about a couple months ago, but with the delays, clerk parties, and so forth, they are what they are. For having a Women Build Week, where the first week of volunteers are actually first week of August, starting that Wednesday through Saturday, and they're all going to be in the uh, doing certain finishing touches after the, doing the interior framing going on from there on those homes. So. Thank you, Ramon. Thank you. Get a hammer. <laughs> All right. Any other non agenda comments? Yes, sir. State your name for the record. Hello, oh, everybody. Going. Um, name's Turner. Uh, we need um, to the neighborhood. 
Um, we've been having some, some screen problems, uh, trying to get some help or problems with grievances. We was unable to do so. Um, the other day, a police officer came to the home and tried to jump over the fence. For no apparent reason, we don't know why. He was maybe right here with the blonde hair. He was um, pretty aware of the situation that was going on and everything. Uh, the police the literally behavior is uncalled for. He's disrespecting me and my family. He's been trying to promise a resolution, but had not, had not, at day, to this day, had not found a resolution. So he was mistreated. At what point we uh, spoke to uh, uh, Mr. Broma, I think his name, let him know about the disrespect and the belligerent behavior done by officers. Still no improvement, anything changed with that. It's like me telling somebody about their self and thinking they're going to file a complaint to their self is not going to happen. So he said it's found no fault in the office. At one point, he was held at gunpoint. He was coming from church services. For no point in reason would be held, you know, he to be held by gunpoint by his office. He didn't find none of his office at fault. For some apparent reason. Now, the other day, the lady here, she called her, and the client officer banged on my door early in the morning, telling me that I need to let somebody come into my job so they could do some work or whatever. You haven't gotten noticed by anybody. But me and Ms. Paula, we figured out the situation and came to the resolution with that. Thanks for her being professional. I think I appreciate that, Ms. Paula. But um, she know what she know what had happened for the religion behavior. The cops performed um sergeant who was a chief the police here, he was aware of the behavior of these people. We've been trying to you know, express that we get picked on, bullied for no apparent reason. There's no like I said, there's nothing that's going on. This one further falls us getting relief from our grievances or whatever. So stuff like this to keep occurring to us for some apparent reason. I'm very sure that no one here is aware of what happened to pretty sure this, this chief did not they let anybody know, know what's going on. I had the opportunity to speak to the mayor. And he said I think the girl's son about the situation that I had asked for. And I appreciate that being apologetic to the but not so much that he's taking this. You know, I let my wife explain to her more about the situation. Um, like my husband said, oh, can you please state your name for the record? Tita. Tita. Um, we just moved in this neighborhood. Um. If guns weren't going on in my family for something that we were not involved in, we probably would not even meet. Like we stayed to ourselves. We go to work, come home, take care of our kids. Um, but then you have the bureau who come and knock on our door like they're the police, tell us what we have to do on our property. No one got in contact with us. No one called us and said someone needs to come on your property for the property next door. They just banged on our door. I work at night. So we would start with us. Tell me what I have to do. I don't have to do anything. Um, it's, it's a way to go about the one thing. Just like everybody here wants respect, we want respect. Of us, us being minorities, people tend to think that they can treat us and talk to us any kind of way that they want to. And like my husband said, um, Mr. Brown, he knows about the situation. It's, it's no revolution. If things continue to happen the way they do, things are not going to change. People still want to treat you the way they treat you. I mean, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm just trying to make the bureau aware of what's going on. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have a sign up sheet. Are there any other non agenda comments? No? 
um, minutes for approval. Do I have a motion to approve the Bernard Council meeting minutes for August 25th, 2023? Sorry. I have a motion by Councilperson Kaufman, second by Councilperson Stahl to approve the Bernard Council meeting minutes for April 25th, 2023. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? Presentation and acceptance of reports. Um, community development. I'd like to acknowledge the receipt of the zoning and planning reports for April 2023 and acknowledge the receipt of the public market house report for April 2023. Uh, Chris, you have anything to say? Uh oh. -uh. Keep it short. Sure. <laughs> Did the time lock? Two minutes. Uh, I'd just uh, like to uh, thank the Columbia citizens of Norwalk for the, the support. Uh, they're giving the market house uh, to see uh, a lot of retired people coming in, uh, old classmates sitting down for a couple hours enjoying the market house. Uh, that's what it's meant to be. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to, uh, uh, to see that happen and the chatter and everything like that. Uh, Reynolds, I had a wedding. I was probably out there about 11 30 Friday, get back up, take care of the market house, and then the big uh, birthday party on Sunday. So, activity's hot on the rentals. Um, I just got a call from McGraw. Uh, uh, McGraw, the uh, supplier of educational supplies, uh, and they are going to be renting out the market house and inviting over 50 different school districts into the market house around the state so they can do a presentation for them. So, that was a big big pickup for the market house to have all these different school districts around the state coming in in the early office. So um, see good things happening. So these type of uh, bringing people from the outside in to visit our town. But like I said, commerce is number one. Uh, bringing people in to visit all the shops, things like that. Uh, like the, uh, the Chief Rock said about uh, uh, Park Oval, how well it's doing. Uh, and the number of people who want to hire it, right? So that's what we want to see, you know. Uh, so we just got to work on the downtown development and push that during the week. Um, I was surprised you didn't highlight on uh, May 20th. Oh, the wall. May 20th, there is going to be a customer appreciation day for us, like vendors that are having one dollar items. Yep. So our so Limit five, but hey, <laughs> yeah, bring, your, bring your family members. They can get in line with you. So, uh, you know, coffee's a dollar, uh, cupcakes a dollar. And there's going to be other deals going on for the next two weeks that you'll see on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, we just appreciate it. Basically, it's the second anniversary of the opening of the market house. But we like to say that, you know, we thank everybody around, just not in Columbia, but around all the small towns that are coming in to, uh, to support this market house. So that, uh, that's a great, great thing. So. Thank, Thank you for having me. Any questions or anything? Thank you. Thank you. And uh, public works and property, Council Purchase Yes, I'd like to acknowledge the receipt of the public works and property report for April 2023. Any questions on that? Next, um, safety and communication, council person regard. I'd like to acknowledge receiving the public safety reports for April 2023, including the Tobin River Police Department, Penn State Health Lifeline, Codes Compliance Report, and an EMOC missing from our packages, the Fire Department Report. I'd also like to acknowledge the Codes Department. Um, and the code has set us back during um, the 2020 moving forward with rental inspections. We were behind it was a hot topic of discussion. We had to get caught up. The Coast Department has been on it. And uh, last month, just the rental uh, inspections 133 last month, 93 this month, 373 total for the year. Uh, appreciate all the hard work that the Coast Department has been doing getting caught up and getting uh, you know, these rental properties safe for the residents. Also, I'd like to acknowledge, you know, the police department. Um, they do so much with, with very little. 
understaffed. Uh, it's a busy department. We understand that. I'd like to just uh, thank them for uh, the work that they, along with the maintenance department, Wilson, and Steve Weiss, Sergeant Miller, and Officer uh, Austin Miller, in cleaning up the homeless again, that's down by the river. Um, beautification and safety is important. Thank you for taking care of that. And as well as the apprehension of the parole of scholar uh, in, in uh, cooperation with the U.S. Marshal Fugitive Task Force. Uh, there's a lot going on in our little world. There's a lot more going on outside our little world. And sometimes it creeps in, and we need to rise to the Thank you. Uh, could I touch on safety just for a minute while we're talking to um, I don't want to let this uh, moment go by. I don't know the family that spoke earlier. I've never met them. But I just want to say that it's very sad for me to hear that you feel bullied in our community. And I don't know the situation. I have no idea what happened. But I just want to take a moment and acknowledge that, you know, I'm sorry to hear that you feel that way. Thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Anything else? That's everything. Right. <coughs> Presentations, we have one. Um, Mayor Lutz is in here. Chief, did you have anything for us? I do. Thank you. I just wanted to uh, let the community know the borough police department is recruiting patrol officers. Uh, we are holding our own test on Saturday, June 10th. Uh, the application process is open through May 26th at 11.59 p.m. Anyone interested in being a police officer in our community, uh, go to Police App and look for Columbia Borough Police. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Just one more. Um, I action items. On A, we are considering all present staff to issue a check the amount of 2653.66 to transfer the balance of the PNR funds to CPAT. Um, prior to the meeting, Mark told me that there was a request from them to have us purchase some supplies before we transfer money. So that money would be taken out of this. Um, so if we do, we would like the motion to say, consider authorizing staff to issue a check for the balance of the TMR funds to CCAT, because then they will make sure, and we don't know what that number is because we don't know how much the other supplies they want us to purchase is. Um, so. Does anyone want to make that motion? Could, Could I, I ask a question first? first? What, what happens, happens if the vote were, were to fail? I mean, what, what happens with the money then? Do, do you continue, continue to pay the invoices through the borough? Is that that's what we talk about, about once we get a motion? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do, do I have a motion? motion? Two. And a second. Sorry. I have a motion by council person Bernard and a second by council person Stahl. To authorize staff to issue a check for the balance of the PMR funds to CCAT. So, questions, comments, concerns? Still has to said. Would it um, still be going through the borough process linked with uh, our finance manager? Is that how the invoices would continue if we didn't get the money transferred? Yes, yes, we would just do the availability of the meeting. So, so it's not, not I, I just want to make sure we're not losing money. No. Until the end of the year for no, us. but I didn't want council to make a motion on a specific amount and then it changed a little bit. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. 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 so, so if your council will vote to approve it tonight, we'll make sure we're clear of the last balances and issue the check. If it doesn't pass tonight, then we will simply all those funds and continue to pay for TNR services, yeah. which could have moved things outside of CCAT if it ever would occur for TNR services. Thank you. Questions, comments, concerns? I'd just like to say how pleased I am with Columbia Cat actually taking 
and the leadership of our Al Landsman. Um, that little group of people have turned into a real powerhouse. Uh, I was getting noticed by the folks from the county. Um, the number of animals that have been treated today is phenomenal. We had originally talked about that magic number of 772 percent, 720 of the 1,000 animals that we have running around here. They're in the hundreds now. Um, that is just really amazing. I couldn't be happier, more pleased with the results of the clinic cat action team. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? So they're now affiliated with and there are five little ones, C3, C3, is actually the animal shelters. Yes. So in essence, we're giving them money to the animal shelter. Yes. This money was set aside for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was um, the guy has a minute. As far as you're saying, Eric, about not giving money to any other animal, 
organization. I don't think there's another animal organization in the world that's a 501c3 idea. I, I, I don't know that for sure. I do know that in order to give it to the animal shelter, we have to you know, kind of have an agreement with them, which we do through your ordinances, to do this type of work. It can't just go to any animal shelter. Well, so that, oh, that's where you were going with your question there. But that's why I would say that if you have money to go to this type of issue, that it should go we, to that. We don't have a real thing like The borough doesn't have a real You designated them as the as the designated organization in your ordinance is only changing the animal ordinance. The Columbia Animal Show. No, the Columbia Cat Action right. Team, which is... Right. Yeah. And we're just going to be like a subcommittee exactly. under their umbrella yeah. because that actually saved us money. Had, if we had passed the former Empire the one in three, it would have cost us, well, they had some estimates. I didn't want to throw numbers around, but it would have cost us a chunk of money out of, out of what we were allotted. Um, I actually think we're privileged to have yeah, the animal I do it's working shelter and ask Columbia Cat Action Team to be a part of their organization. I think mm -hmm. it really supports what we're trying to do as a borough and this committee. Um, they have a facility for meeting. And they're the professional. the professionals. Yeah. Um, and they were kind of a part of the action team anyway from the very beginning. Correct. They were. Um, in my opinion, the way that Columbia Cat has taken off and really went above and beyond in the scope of what was expected or the goals of the committee to give them the rest of what was allotted for this year that we decided to spend on it anyways just seems like out of a gesture of approval that it's a fair thing to do. Now, whether we continue in the future, given they have their own, um, but yeah, I mean, we were going to spend this anyways if they had stayed outside it on their own versus being a part of the 501c3 with the Columbia Animal Shelter. So in my mind, it's it doesn't seem like there's a a legal or a um, an issue of fairness, given that it were a commission of, of Columbia Borough Council to begin with. <clears throat> Not an outside group that came in and wanted to do their thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I said it to the point of making everyone sick, but we have such a dedicated group of people, volunteers, that are taking their own time and gas and everything else to make this happen. And I don't know what would happen if we didn't have the team and we continue to have complaints from people through codes. Um, you know, where would we be without this over the last year? So, I don't know. I hate to lose steam now. But. Well, I, I wonder if you're going to lose steam. I mean, it's five months into the year, and almost almost all the money's gone. Well, we're able now to fundraise that we're under the um, cat shelters. Well, yeah, I know, but I still like you know I I hope that this money running out isn't going to lead to losing steam. I don't believe it will. On a personal note, I don't think so. I can't say for sure, but I don't think so. Any other questions, comments, concerns? On the other on the other side, what's the worst that could happen if we just say we'll continue to write checks? Right. We're still gonna do it. Right. <laughs> so send me away. Here or there. I mean if that's a better idea, we can always you know, we can always write checks for the rest of the year. <laughs> no, I feel they were your commission to do a job, which is take care of the cat problem. A thousand cats. And we all know that it's a, it's a matter of volume and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Speed, for, for lack of a better word, do, doing it in a timely fashion and in a high volume to reach a point, a plateau, a point of 
of um, mass sterilization so they don't reproduce and could continue the problem. I think they've done that. They've, they've achieved that. That's what we've asked them to do. And we knew the costs were going into this at $50 or more, somewhere around there per cat. You can do the math on that pretty easily. They're doing a fantastic job. They're doing what we ask. We've supported them. We're offering to raise their own funds. They're doing everything they need to do to keep their momentum going. If they need more money, look at their books, see how they're spending it, where the funds are going. And they can say, hey, we've done more cats. Let's support them some more. Um, I'm all about backing this organization with our money as well because it's, it's a matter of safety and um, quality of life for everybody in this borough. They're not going to one neighborhood, they're getting every single neighborhood where a colony exists. They're doing the job right. I'm all for support. Well, and I got a call Sunday about a patent that was under someone's shed. And I went out that afternoon and kind of assessed the situation. And by, by Monday, we had traps set. So I can't say we can't, but we're working on it. But I mean, when we get a uh, call or notification, we try to act on that almost immediately sometimes. So. Anyone else on council? Thoughts, comments? Any comments from the audience? Great. I have a motion by Councilperson Bagard, second by Councilperson Stahl, to authorize staff to issue a check for the remaining balance of the TNR from funds to CCAT. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. Um, so just let Tammy know, like, whatever the, yeah, the, only one. the balance is. And then, I guess we'll see it the next time. Check the next two items are concerning the 400 Locust Street property. Um, I don't think it's fair. Yeah, well, can, can I? Can I? No, can I? Can I start here? Yes. This is what I'm saying. This morning, I was notified um, of a request to um, postpone the vote on 400 Locust Street um, until both parties could be here each, you know, because we have two offers at this point. Um, I was not making a unilateral decision on postponing or pulling anything off the agenda. I wanted um, council to acknowledge that we had the two offers. Um, I do see though Habitat is here. If we wanted to hear their plans for the property, um, we can do that. Or if you want to vote on the motion. but. I wanted to leave that up to council on what we do. Well, the um, parties weren't here the last time. No, they when were we not. Voted, when we voted the first time around, nobody was here, right? They yeah. have an opportunity to come, but no one showed up. Right. No one showed up. Has has Sibiron been offered the opportunity yes, they to provide a counter offer? I do assume so. I mean, Jeff, they had an opportunity to What I will say is this. I, in, Talking with Simran today, um, they would like the opportunity to be heard. Um, and in my opinion, I think it would be prudent to do so, to allow them. They've requested an opportunity to be here. Um, I don't think waiting two weeks on this is going to, to hurt anything until you've heard from everyone. Um, so I would just put that out there. Um, you know, they've asked to to come in and be heard, and again, there's nothing wrong with hearing from Habitat tonight if they're here, but um, right. I think it would be best to hear from everyone before you make a decision. But then why weren't they here the last time? That was their choice. This time they have asked for the I also say I have no problem honoring that if they want to come in and present before council. At the last meeting, and even with this whole man before, I think there was some discussion about 
what's going to happen there? Is this the best offer for the borough? Is this going to do the right thing? And I think hearing both offers may help council make a, a more informed decision. Well, and I guess it's good we didn't rush right in to sell it for the lower price because now we have a higher offer since we waited. So there was some some degree of rush to sale, and yet now we got so yes, there isn't a rush. Maybe we'll get another offer. Again. <laughs> I would not say that there's a rush to sale. I'm just going through the process. It came up only generally what it did. I don't think we tried to rush anything. I think we just tried to give a fair opportunity for anyone who wanted to purchase it to move forward. Yeah, and like I said, I was just notified this morning, so I figured I was not making a decision to pull anything from the agenda. I wanted to throw it out there that we do have the two competing offers. Um, I, I would like to hear, though, what plans are for the property, because that was one of the things that we considered last time, was plans for the property. Um, did we want to hear from Habitat tonight, since they are here? I'm probably listening to Habitat tonight. Did they want to, did they want to do it the same way? Simon, is there a presentation or tonight? Tonight or in two weeks? I made your disposal. All right. Well, let us know what you got. Happy to answer any questions. Where do we start? First question. <laughs> what do you want to do with the property? Yep. <laughs> uh, make affordable homes. My, my, our mission is making low income home ownership possible, transforming lives through that, what we're doing at South Pit. And that's the first. As a job I got hired to do. Our plan for this one make at least two homes on it. Condominium style, most likely, flats, and with commercial property. The properties will probably go about three stories. We've got some variations about what we can do there, but something that would match the neighborhood, match the glory of Locust Street, and then make it affordable with the donations and our partners and compressing the cost down with the other mortgage income group that has and our our restore net. How? Because I know I know a big part of your of your program is there's like yeah. a, a great question. A rental, like a lease oh, space. Yeah, you know it's it's actually a great question because most of our projects these days are actually incorporating a lot more uh volunteer work. The days when we started and for for this affiliate in the early or I'm sorry late 80s and early 90s, we were charging 500 sweat equity hours per house, which made sense. But these days, we have a lot more single families, single heads of households, as you say. Uh, and we've actually reduced that to be much, and it's much more continued, much more of uh, what county kind of affiliates are doing in Delaware, New Jersey, throughout Pennsylvania now, 250 hours for a single head of household, 400 for a double. It makes it more reasonable when you've got two jobs, when you've got a lot of family responsibilities. You don't put in that time. So uh, having more mechanical contracting professionals coming in and doing it, gives some time, contributing you know, maybe materials and you pay for labor or, or all of it, and uh, uh, do a lot of training. For a building like this, obviously there's going to be probably a lot more subcontractor work to get up in the air, but the finishing work, everything from the floor and the drywall, the insulation, uh, and, and some of the basic electrical work of literally slamming the lines and you know, getting through the studs can be done by volunteer labor and accumulating the uh, 250 hours. And some of that 250 hours of the both volunteer and sweat equity time, especially for the homebuyer, the sweat equity hours, is, is educational and contributing to the community. So we can also have them working on some of our other projects in the area. Hopefully, get some more rehabs here. Well. <laughs> All right, and I understand, I just for um, the rest of council. They have already um, looked at, researched out the zoning ordinance and everything to make sure that what they're planning complies with zoning and, and so forth, because that was one of the questions I had um, when they first approached me was, did you look at zoning to make sure? Because right away I thought Habitat, they just want homes, and that's not really what we want in the downtown. But then when I heard, oh, it's a mixed use, I was like, oh, well, that's exactly what we're, this we're, means says. Yeah, in, in fact, we're um, definitely committed to innovating. With the limited land available to be able to make the homes possible, we understand that innovation, either with commercial space, doing it mixed use, having a kind of, and maybe it might even actually work with another partner to help manage the property. Uh, we may end up working as the HOA. 
for the homeowners to get all the next common elements and so forth. That's a new thing we're exploring, but that's not outside the realm of what a lot of other habitat occur in Haiti, at least it's across the country, to be able to make that project possible. With, with uh, uh, forgive me, but landlocked communities, you know, like Columbia, there's only so much land that's available to be able to make the homeownership opportunities for first time home buyers coming for a neighbor they want to be part of, uh, like that. So these are the sort of things that we're, we're embracing. I like the fact that the uh, residentials are residential units, not or like purchase units, not mm -hmm. not rental units. So yeah. I, I do like that a lot. If I may add in, if, if there was a delinquency situation, uh, worst case scenario, the default, we have the right of first refusal, and I am in these days, I am much more inclined to split the cost of money, uh, purchase back the property, mm -hmm. get them out from under it. And we can put them back into another habitat homeowner's hand, another affordable homeowner with the state that wants to get into you. That's very important to us. And it's about the building. It's absolutely, the equity going into the home, you are going to be improving a person's life by that home. That home is the most powerful vehicle for wealth building in America. It's probably the most American thing we could possibly do. We did less for expansion so we could have our own plot of land. Right now, in the common way of making home ownership, especially in urban infill, we got to be a little more innovative in trying to make lots like this work. That's what I'm here for. Now, I've been, uh, I've been educating myself on work and habitat for humanity, as well as much as affordable housing really made. And uh, uh, I like what you said. I mean, you said ownership. ownership is really the mission of affordable housing, as I understand it. Um, Am I right, Dave? It's our mission. <laughs> so, um, uh, I know Nick works for Habitat, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I appreciate what you're saying. <laughs> I appreciate more. I appreciate what you're saying more today than maybe I ever would have in the past. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I hear what you're. I know what you're laying down. Yeah. Any other questions for Habitat? Questions, comments, concerns. Um, yes. So I'm just. Can wondering. you come to the microphone and say your name for the record, please? Of course. Hi, Chambers, Pro Council candidate. So I was here in the meeting where you previously discussed the, the, uh, the focus property last time, and you were willing to sell it at a very significant loss to the Pro. So I'm just wondering uh, what would change in your methodology that would make you want to wait? Well, like I said, we were requested to wait on so that all parties that have an offer could be heard. In this case, we'll And we haven't made that decision yet. We're, it's just been proposed. I understand. In this case, wouldn't it be more, more prudent to just take the offer that's the highest? That's, what, the that's what we're debating here. <laughs> it wouldn't be. What if the other offer came back with a counter and right. they came back with 60000 And the Habitat community came back and said 61 and it becomes a bidding one. Mm -hmm. And then we get up to the final price that we originally bought, purchased the property for. <laughs> you got to let it run its play. you got to let it run its course. Um, all folks need to be heard. We need to be satisfied. And you're right, we need to wait to get the best price. Moving really quickly doesn't mean the clinic price. Maybe waiting an extra day or an extra day for an extra Was there you know, some comments from Peter, I believe, the only one interested in waiting to sell? I Thank don't you. think that was the case. You know. <laughs> yes, Frank. <laughs> Here on the offer, and the habitat and the habitat for humanity making the offer. Do, do I understand or I did not hear that it's strictly commercial on the first floor and residential on the second floor? Is that the prophecy that we're following? That's what following? you said, yes. That's what we're following. Uh, 
And do they have a plan for the parking? I would assume so, yes. Yeah, they have a whole plan. And is there a reason the other party is not here tonight, being that it's already on, on the agenda? They were unavailable, that was all. Okay. We were told. Okay, well, that's, that's fair. I right, thank you. So, if let me quick say that. Any project that comes in for this land would have to be approved. Our subject of land development ordinance, our zoning ordinance, or if necessary, ask for a relief for any sections. So then we have that tool in place to regulate what goes on this lot. So are there any, um, well, first of all, the first thing I will, I'll ask is would anybody like to make a motion to table the offer from Cimarron Investments um, for 400 Locust Street? Uh, I, I, I motion to table. Table? Yeah. Second. All right, I have a motion by Councilperson Brigard and a second by Councilperson Stahl to table the motion um, to table the offer from Habitat for Humanity for 400 Lister Street. Second. I have a motion by Councilperson Brigard and a second by Councilperson Price to table the offer from Habitat for Humanity to 400 Lister Street. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, Anyone opposed? Those are tabled until the meeting on the on May 23rd. Thank you. So we will vote on that on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you. Next, um, it's an innovation park located at 1020 Manor Street, the amount of $22,751. We have a motion by Councilperson Stahl, second by Councilperson Kaufman um, to approve change order number two for ECS Mid Atlantic. Questions, comments, concerns? I have a question on it. Um, Some time ago, back in November of 21, um, you had talked about that there was no levels of threat that were significant enough to to be concerned, I guess, about at the time. But on part of this letter here, it does say that consistent with previously identified impact, soil samples will be analyzed for the metal lead. So, first I heard lead wasn't really a factor because the level of industrial park area. The lead was discovered above the Pickles Tom Lesser Home site, and they believe the lead is probably the result of either and or lead paint and or lead in the construction. So it's right there at the very tip of the property, right where the old house was, is where the lead was discovered. So I think it's from the demolition material, not from the soil materials. And those are the only two sites of that one and the arsenal. Any other questions, comments, concerns? Council from the audience. <coughs> I have a Motion by Council Person Stahl, second by Council Person Kaufman, to approve, approve change order number two for ECS Mid Atlantic LLC for groundwater and additional soil characterization from McGinnis Innovation Park, located at 1020 Manor Street, mm -hmm. in the amount of $22,751. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Next. Um, do I have a motion to approve change order number two for Rue Environmental for additional historic documentation on airport historic resources to upload the information into SHPO's online data system for the McGinnis Innovation Park? Motion. Come on, Mark. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> do I have a motion? And a second. A motion by Council Person Stahl, second by Council Person Kaufman to to uh, approve change order number two for Rue Environmental. Right, second. Now, um, Mark. Thank you. The initial um, archaeological report did suggest that some 
shovel tests be done in the area that did not contain fill. The area is basically along South 9th Street um, near the Klein property that we purchased and heading south um, all the way down um, to the end of South 9th Street. That area is less disturbed than the, the, the fill area of the airport. We didn't have any concern with any of the airport properties. Nothing showed up down along the quarry area. Just had small strip there. So we have to now have them come back out and do field work to just take a few test pits with double look for any evidence of any archaeological information. Nothing is found that closes this out from us. Questions, comments, concerns from the audience. None. I have a motion by Councilperson Skull, second by Councilperson Kaufman to approve change order number two for Brew Environmental for additional historic documentation on air, airport historic resources and to upload the information to the online data system for the McGinnis Innovation Park located at 1020 Manor Street in the amount of $1,959. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Next, uh, authorization to pay bills. Do I have a motion to authorize the bill pays? Mm -hmm. A motion by Council Person Kaufman, second by Council Person Stahl to approve the bill pays. Are there any questions, comments, or concerns? I have a question um, on page seven, the McGinnis project. There's there's various things I see pop up here sometimes. This one's uh, four thousand nine hundred nine thirty two. How do we know which, is it just being added up? How do we know what part of the, like we have grants and we have a loan and did we get the $5 million loan yet or will that be down the road? I'm, I'm not sure how all the McGinnis money is being tracked. Like it, it seems like each time we have some here, some there, and now we have 22000 tonight and a 1900 and I just don't understand where it's coming from, um, what pot it's coming out of. Can I? Because I actually know the answer to this. Um, that it tells us what account that's coming out of. The budget for this year was 500000 which is about, um, well, that puts us to the million for. The million dollar DCG grant, we're still spending. We're still we spending. Uh, okay. right. So I saw the 500000 but I didn't know if that was part of the grant or part of the. Yeah, that's, part of yeah, that's yeah. still part of the DCG okay. grant. Okay. And then this is um, how much is still left in that, what we budgeted for this year. Uh, but yeah, so that's where you can see where it's coming out of, and that's what our budget was for this year. But we exactly. didn't actually then take out, I mean, get the million dollar, or the five million dollar loan yet. Is that correct or not? No, no. we asked for an ex another extension on the loan um, to give us a little more time to get some more things finished. We will be closing on the loan. Um, oh, I forget the date, I think it's in July now. So we're all set up ready to go. And DCB has been great to work with us and extending things out. We were very upfront from the beginning that we might need additional time to get this done. They had no problem with that. So we're right on track. Okay, thank you. Right. And it's once we close, I mean, there's no interest on it. So for five years. For five years. So okay. it's not like once we get it, we're starting to pay interest on it and it's costing us because it's not. Yeah, we haven't even taken advantage of the three million grant on that. But once we start moving, it's gonna it's gonna go. Right. Are there any other questions on the bill case? Council from the audience. All right. I have a motion by council person Kaufman, second by council person Stahl to approve the bill case. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Next, um, new business. We have, I know it looks like there's two motions, um, but that's because one is the hard motion and the other is the actual demolition. Um, first, do I have a motion to approve the certificate of appropriateness 
for properties 154 and 156 South 5th Street um, for demolition approval. So it's at 154 South 5th Street and 156 South 5th Street. Um, I will note that no, um, all right, and I have a motion by Council Person Lindner, second by Council Person Kaufman to approve the certificate of appropriateness for properties 154 and 156 South 5th Street for demolition approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Um, I will sign the certificate of appropriateness. We can have Sean sign them later and get you get him copies. Great. Um, I like to sign them right now, though. Ask me. All right. So the appropriateness is out of the way. Next, um, do I have a motion to approve the demolition application for 154 and 156 South Fifth Street? I have a motion by Council Person Kaufman, second by Council Person Price, to approve the demolition application for 154. And 156 South Fifth Street. It's the demolition of two existing single family residences. These were the properties that were damaged in the fire um, not too long ago, and they're now owned by the land bank. So, and a new uh, construction yeah. is, is planned. Yep, and Sean is here. He can answer any questions on the properties. Are there any um, questions, comments, concerns from council from the audience? Uh, uh, just a quick note. Um, the, the one property has high historic value here in the community, and there was interest in at least going through and looking through the house to see if there's anything left of historic nature that could be um, saved from the house pre demolition. So. You know, Chris Beer has been in, in aware of this. And we'll Correct. Take yeah. I mean, basically, the only thing left is basically the basement. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the last <coughs> pre slave from 1823 that the house. Well, absolutely. We're happy. Like, yeah. We yeah. might get you to sign a waiver or something, sure. Sure. Um, obviously. I'm unsure about the museum. Okay, okay. So, okay. gotcha. Yeah. I mean, the state of the property. Like, and plus, first. I'll be watching the dig because it's going to be mm -hmm. that, that's a very historic property. Well, absolutely. absolutely. But definitely, I'll work with you. Great. Is that the one right on the tablet? It is. Yes. Yes. Okay. I was out the other day and looked at them from the back. It looked pretty bad. Yeah. 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 It's rough. It's rough shape. And I will say I did ask um, the fact that it's still in disrepair. Once we approve this demolition, um, I would I feel confident to say that by the middle of next month the homes will be down. It's not going to take much longer. So Absolutely. I mean, the demolition itself won't take long. Obviously, we want to uh, accommodate sure. everyone getting into the property for uh, the historic reasons, but right. for, you know. So, but yeah, I just wanted to let them know that if anyone else gets calls from neighbors um, concerned about how long it's taking, it should be done by the middle of next month. So. All right. I have a motion by Council Person Kaufman. Second by Council Person Price to approve the demolition application for 154 and 156 South Fifth Street. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. You are opposed? Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. I love our partnership with the Land Bank. You guys have been awesome. Huh? Thank you. Appreciate it. And um, dollars and fifty cents for the Magic Appliance Store project. Um, this is, they always give us a public security for the, we've been through this for the public uh, improvements um, in case something happens, that's the money they gave us. Um, this is just asking us to release it all. Derek is satisfied that um, all of the, the project work is completed, um, so this is just giving them their money back. Um, so confident voting on this. You're satisfied. Yep. Do you have a motion? So, I have a motion by Council Person Stall. Second by Council Person Regard to 
release all remaining public security in the amount of $16,890.50 for the Magic Appliance Store project. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right. Staff reports, comments, and announcements. Uh, Solicitor Hale. I don't have any further. All right. Um, thank you, Mayor Ronaldo. Oh, since I've got time. <laughs> oh, I got lots. So, <laughs> now just a, an update on the an update on the Walnut Street project and the 100 200 block Walnut Street project. We are inching closer to our uh, secure or our safety approval from PennDOT on that. Um, in this stage of the game, you may have seen some traffic loops out. We've been conducting some traffic studies on that street. Um, that's the initial kind of data gathering for the studies we need to warrant the additional stop sign we're looking to put up and also the change to a one way street that we try to study. Uh, we actually had a meeting this afternoon with our lighting consultant, so we're looking at that street lights as well. We're doing that. Okay. Um, yeah, before you move yes. on, can I ask about the one street? Yes. Um, I have sent a picture to Mark about um, the Shannon Armory there, no Winer Center, mm -hmm. um, and how people park in there, mm -hmm. and how they also don't park on mm -hmm. the street when they're picking. Now, I just wondered how that's going to work with Corn Drive, because if the double parking is just people up there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, the picture I sent had two cars actually double parked at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we have in the we have in the proposed plan that there will be a cut in the median there to allow access to that site. So at this current, you know, currently parking in front of the, the center, we, we're going to maintain that. So I guess I have to state to the public, don't double park there, that's illegal. Um, <laughs> well, again, that's the, so if anything, Dare I say it might get a little bit better. Oh, there's going to okay. be more room to okay. double park if you so choose to break the law and double park. But you're now, instead of having a travel lane there, you're going to have a break. So you're going to have the width of the median, and then you're going to have the bike lane, and then you have the parking area. So my hope would be, at a minimum, that people can get over to where the parking lane would be. There's not going to be any parking permit on the street in front of the center, but there will be some space to move over to the side you kind of jimmy your car in between the travel lane and the bike. So, yes, we will post it with no parking. Chief, that's up to you How, when you want to drive down that street. Actually, in that spot, there might be some more room for, for, uh, for that being here. I didn't picture yeah. that, but I said thing we have looked at is this is one of the properties that does have an accessible alley behind it that does have parking lot. And we'll work with the um, association there that the Columbia Boys are to use the back area. If you need to come in and drop off and be here a while, they can go down the alley behind, stop there, drop people off, let people pick your love there, instead of blocking traffic at different places. Okay, thanks. All right, just a couple more quick things. We did hold a pre construction meeting. Uh, last week for the Second Street CDBG project, Union and Perry, um, that will be kicking off this summer. So we're good to go there. We have a contractor in place, as you all know. And looking forward to the next CDBG project, um, I request to see you on your agenda for the 23rd uh, for our required uh, public hearing that we will need to have to submit the CDBG application. Uh, your CDBG application is due by May 30th. So we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a quick quick public meeting there as part of your 23rd. Um, at that point, we'll be asking for council's authorization to submit the grant, and we'll get it all in and done. Keep our fingers crossed because there's not right. a lot of talk. There's no, there's not. <laughs> but Sean really likes the project. Right? <laughs> all right, it's not up to me. I know Sean. <laughs> So, going out there with the pom poms and oh yeah, and, and brought it right up for us. <laughs> and, and maybe one last uh, one last announcement: uh, the planning commission meeting next week, which is moved to Thursday due to election day, so it will be Thursday the 18th. That's a joint meeting with the ad hoc committee. We're going to start running through the comp plan at a pretty detailed level. So, please, anybody who's interested in Comp plan, that's a, that'd be a good meeting for you to attend, or at least one. 
Awesome. Model, model iron. Thank you. Thanks. Um, Secretary Treasurer, Mr. Stivers. Thank you. I received an email about two weeks ago from a resident who lives actually in New York and sent a rather detailed email about her experiences and <laughs> not new, but just at the level of frustration of, of traveling the Route 30 from York County in through into Lancaster County. And uh, the mayor and I both had a very similar reaction and that <laughs> echoing what Councilperson Regard has said for a long time, that this is a great opportunity for us to begin looking at safety measures and improvements along that corridor. Not because 30 is under construction, not because 462 Bridge is under construction, but because we want to ensure the safety of everyone who travels that corridor. Speeding has been and continues to be a problem down here. Aggressive driving appears to be a problem along that corridor. So I just want to take a moment to, to make a statement that it's, it's us individually. It's not an engineering problem. It's not a sight distance problem. It's a driver behavior problem that is, is causing these, these concern out here. And I think that all of us need to take our responsibility to slow down a little bit um, and make our intersection, our interchange coming into the, this great community safer. Um, if you have driven 30 heading towards Central Road, you know that that's under construction. Um, they have one of those vehicles out there that captures your license plate and sends you a ticket in the mail. Uh, you have been caught? Good. <laughs> if not, you aren't. Don't speak to her. I have not got the ticket. Um, but it's, it's effective, and it's amazing how, with a bit of enforcement, people are now slowing down through that zone. And then, of course, everyone just speeds up and get through it. Um, I think we need something similar in this area of our stretch of 30, and I'll say from Cool Creek or maybe further back in York County, all the way through and past Prospect Road, um, to make it a safer corridor. Um, I have reached out to all of our elected officials, county and state. All of them have received the message and actually want to agree to say, hey, now is the time to sit down and talk about this. One issue that I think this is a great chance for us to take advantage of is the local authority to use radar. Um, this is, uh, the, the latest complaint to us directly was get out there and enforce it. And we're like, we really don't have the tools and ability to do that on a road like that. It just doesn't work. State police do. Um, I don't know what their plans are, but it doesn't seem like they have been enforcing that recently. So we're going to take this opportunity to reach out to elected officials, get some meetings together, get some safety measures put in place now, um, make an immediate push so that we can make aware of this situation and see if we can, as a community, help make it safer and see if we can get the word out to make it safer. Um, work with our state legislators, work with the state police, work with everyone who can do something about it. So um, we will be talking about this more. On top of that, please remind yourselves that the Route 30 bridge is currently being inspected and checked for safety improvements. Um, if they find anything significant, um, they will repair the 30 bridge before they start the PA 462 project. So those are our stack projects. Um, I'm also going to take a moment to thank everyone who participated on um, Friday the 28th for the Arbor Day um, celebration. I know the weather didn't seem to want to cooperate and we ended up shifting things here in the, in the Borough Hall. But it was a great event and one that I think this community continues to be proud of. Um, their work to be a, a Tree City USA and, and celebrate our day. So thank you all for participating in that event. Um, that's it. All right. Yes? Yes. Hi, um, um, I just have a follow up question for you. Could you come to the microphone and state your name for the record, please? <sighs> just because we're live streaming, we can't hear you. Just okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Amy Powers. Hi. I'm just curious when you're talking about that area of land, are you including over by the Tricky Hill experience? For the US 30? The part to you were like, it's a problem and people drive like crazy and this meeting and. To be honest, I'm, I'm sure it's much longer. I'm mm -hmm. driving 30 a lot. There's a lot of accidents down heading towards Lexus City. There's a lot 
of congestion and problems with the, the, the 3222 split. Um, there's a lot of issues along there. there. There are a significant number of accidents in this area. Where did you say the can was? Sorry, it just went by too fast. You were oh, saying it's it's by it's it was, it's a Central Road construction area. area. Yes. And so it's temporary? Yes, yes. absolutely temporary. Yeah. Thanks. But I can tell you that it is working, it is effective, and it's not one here, I would say. Is that something you guys would consider doing more of, the cameras? Like, we can't do that. That's the same way that construction does. Can yeah. do those? Yeah. Yeah. There was, no, there was no fine attached to it. There was just a warning. It was a warning. Yeah. Do you know in Maryland, you guys know, it's just a picture and it's something else to you, or do you get it with That's a good deterrent. It's yeah. probably very expensive. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Upcoming meetings um, with Harv on next or harvest is tomorrow evening the 10th parks and rec is this thursday the 11th there is a joint um, meeting of the planning commission and the ad the uh, comprehensive plan ad hoc committee on the 18th which is next thursday and the shade tree commission is on the 22nd um, in your packet you also have the approved minutes for last time, the March meeting and the annual report, which is why the packet was so large. Um, borough Council comments. Um, Council Person Bavard. Yeah, a few things. Uh, earlier when I when I thanked the police department, knowledge of the police department and the maintenance department for the cleanup down the river, I don't know if I mentioned names. I mentioned Wilson. Yeah. And I don't mention my name and uh, Steve White. So I didn't mention my name for you, but I'll mention it again. So. And yeah, hey, uh, I got this email from uh, the uh, Lancaster County Housing Redevelopment Authority. Uh, the COVID 19 um, ARPA funds, uh, a chunk of that is going towards a program that they're calling the Whole Home Repair Program. The program provides funding to address habits, ability, and safety concerns, provide measures to improve energy and water efficiency, and make units accessible for individuals with disabilities. So this money goes to homeowners in the city, and there's a grant available for up to $25,000. If you own a home in the county, there's a grant available for up to $25,000, and a zero interest loan available for up to $50,000. If you need more information about this program, if you're interested, um, please check out the Lancaster County Housing Redevelopment Authority website. Also, um, on Thursday the 27th, Manager Stivers, Mayor Lutz, and myself attended the Lux, along with the Lancaster County Solid Waste Management Authority public officials meeting. It was, it was a wonderful event. Um, there's so much to share about what Luxemburg has done and what they're planning to do in the future to take care of Lancaster County's trash and recyclables uh, issues. They're massive, and they're going to continue to get even more massive. It's an incredible presentation, but my biggest takeaway here was just really the sheer scale of the conversion of waste to energy that, um, along with the landfill reduction that Luxemburg uh, does, with the trash here in the county, it's unprecedented, and we're really privileged to have this organization work on behalf of the residents in this county. It's an awesome, incredible organization. I've worked the place several times, and it's it's like ballet with with uh, bulldozers inside that dump area, the uh, dump floor, I think they call it, the tilting floor. It's amazing. Uh, check out Box Mama. It's lcswma.org to see what their plans are and learn more about what they're doing here. And uh, one last thing, um, text my dog. <laughs> Council person call. Council person open. Yes. yes, I wanted to just announce that there will be a cat meeting tomorrow night in this room at 5 30. And I know we had that, um, I was able to participate this year a little bit in the cleanup. And Eric and I did an animation. Unfortunately, we just see a lot more trash around again. But 
on a good day this morning, I saw an older woman out on Walnut Street sweeping the gutters, and she said she was doing that in preparation for the street cleaner coming through. So there is hope. People are trying to clean up their area. That's all I have. Councilperson Price. Um, Councilperson Fisher asked me to announce that there is going to be a speaker Monday night, May the 15th, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Market House speaking about purpose and prosperity. It's a 3E task force. What time? 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Market House. So the council person stall. Oh, All right, um, I had a couple of things. Um, the first thing I wanted to say is I wanted to um, encourage all of council um, to look into PA House Bill 299 um, on MACE. I don't know if, ever, if you saw your um, emails from PSAB, but on May 2nd, um, the State House of Representatives passed House Bill 299 um, which would mandate public employers be subject to OSHA employee safety standards. Um, it is a large unfunded mandate on local governments and it would um, have extreme consequences on our budget. Um, it, like I said, it has already passed the State House, um, but I would encourage everyone to email um, or contact Senator Allman to um, urge him to vote no on this if it does come out of um, the Senate committee. I don't know if we as a council would like to send a letter to him, you know, to, con to send something to him or not, um, but I know PSAB um, sent it out and I've already, they have their advocacy network if you have not signed up for the advocacy network, I would encourage everyone to do that um, because they'll send it out and you can with one click send letters to your representatives and um, senators, so that's pretty cool. Um, the next thing, I was contacted, <laughs> as I was getting ready to come down here this evening, I was contacted by the elections office by April. Um, there, is a, there is a need for someone to serve a half day in the fifth ward polling place. Um, I don't, she didn't tell me if it was afternoon or morning half day, um, but if you are interested in that, if the fifth ward votes up here at St. Paul's Episcopal, if you're interested in um, doing that, it is a paid gig. Um, I think the half day is $50 um, for the half day, but contact the Lancaster County Elections Office talk to April and um, she can give you that information and get you hooked up there. Volunteering for the elections is it's definitely a rewarding experience. Serving in what capacity? Um, it's just working in the election office and processing the voters, you know, that. Yeah, just you know, a poll worker. Poll worker, okay. Yep. Is that the beauty of that word? No. You don't even have to be from the town. <laughs> you just can't be on the ballot in that word. Yeah. Um, and I think that is it. Um, but yeah, I told her, I was like, hey, well, I have a meeting tonight, I'll announce it. So we're going to get you someone, because whenever I announce something, they seem to get people. So, and again, there are new changes to Columbia's voting wards. Um, polling places for next week, so next Tuesday, well, vote the primary. Um, same place you voted last time. Never meeting next week. No. Um, all right. The next meeting will be 7 p.m. on May 23rd. It will be a regular meeting, but I have a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by Council Person Price, second by Council Person Linder to adjourn the meeting at 8.23 p.m. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? We are adjourned. Yes. All right.